Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we're doing a review from Billie Eilish. This one is her debut record. This one is called When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Billie Eilish, at the time of the release of this album, is a 17-year-old singer-songwriter, and she is of the alternative pop... Uh, alternative rock, electro pop kind of scene. This is her debut album. This is following up Don't Smile At Me, which was her EP back from 2017. She was only 15 years old at the time of that release. But many of the haunted instrumentals would foreshadow what would be used on this full length commercial debut right here. I wasn't really the biggest fan of that EP from 2017. I would say my boy would probably be my favorite song from it, um, but I feel like Billie was still trying to hone her craft and she was still trying to differentiate herself from her contemporaries, Lana Del Rey, Lord. Either way, I still feel like she captured the millennial audience with the themes of depression and suicide, two things that remain prevalent in Billie's demographic. Heading into late 2018, Billie put out a single in support of the Apple holiday film. This one was called Come Out and Play. I really like the soft ballad approach and the dynamic progression on that one. Then earlier in January, Billy put out another single called When I Was Older in support of the film Roma. I love the darker tone on this one, and I feel like both of these promotional singles give the audience an idea of what to expect on this debut, although neither of them are actually placed on the record. Now to give you guys a bit of a sense of what to expect from this album, it has this dichotomy between bittersweet ballads and scary jams that kick off with the song Bad Guy. This one has a groovy bass line, it's super bass heavy. The lyrics here have Billy taunting her lover and flipping the gender norm and saying how she can be tougher than the tough guy. You know, she can make your mama sad, she can make your girlfriend mad, and she can even seduce your dad. Those kinds of things. I just love the dark tone of this track, the, the close miking of the vocals and the howling and spooky synth tones are a plus. On this track, the chorus also makes use of Billy's monster voice, and that's what I'm going to call it um, from here on out, so if you hear me kind of refer to that later on in the video, you know what I'm talking about. Either way, I still like the added effect here. On Bad Guy, the track closes with this reprise of rattling bass with a bit of a trap rap beat. Kind of gives the song a bit more of an irresistible flavor and I feel like it catches me off guard every time I listen to it, so I know every time I come back to it, it's just going to be as fulfilling as the first. Moving on to the next song, we get a track called Zanny. This one's a bit more of a slower and introspective track that questions her friend's use of drugs, be it cigarettes, weed, Xanax. We hear a lot of dialogue in the background of this track, which is an important element to Xanax as well as the rest of the album. With the song Zanny, I really appreciate it lyrically as it calls out uh, some of the rappers that have been flaunting their use of Xanax in the past year or so. It also points out the lackluster conversation that happens at parties. The vocal deliveries are sweet and quiet, uh, very similar to how Lord would present some of her vocals. The influence is hard to ignore as that was my biggest concern coming into this project, but uh, I was put at ease with the originality and the darker tone of the songs on here. For example, the track You Should See Me in a Crown is one that pulsates with spine chilling and eerie production. The knife sharpening is a blood-curdling kind of touch that just pulls together the darkest kind of displays of confidence. Really, I can't believe I didn't hear this track when it first came out in July of 2018. It's a perfect single for this project and it has a bit of a pop appeal for sure. The pop tracks are more apparent on this project with the bouncy nature of the bass on All the Good Girls Go to Hell. This is a track that is short and concise. It kind of plays with the traditional Christian sayings and flips the glorified view of heaven upside down. Billy comes face to face with her demons as she does on many of the songs from this album, but this one feels like a clash between good and evil, like the angel and devil in this very tightly produced track. Speaking about the production, it's handled by Phineas O'Connell, who is Billy's brother. The two have worked together in this very loving brother-sister relationship, and that's what sparks a lot of the songwriting on this project. Take a track like Wish You Were Gay, for example. This one was dropped before the album's release as a single. I didn't really enjoy it that much. I felt like the, the vocals were a little too similar to Lord on this one, but the production is captivating for something that starts out as like this acoustic guitar track, and then it just builds with this anthemic quality. Another pre-release song on this project is called When the Party's Over. This one's a bit more of a slower cut like Zanny. This one is more piano driven. It has a, a sad and despairing mood. The melodies on here are 
probably the blandest on the project in my opinion. The vocal performance is, is a little breathy for me to enjoy. Then we get 8, which is a track that kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. The vocal manipulations at the beginning has has Billy sounding like a child. I can't really stand it. I do appreciate the, the experimentation trying to switch up what we typically hear in the mainstream pop realm of things. But compared to the ukulele track on the, the EP that she put out from 2017, I feel like this one just, just falls short. Rebounding from those past two songs, I feel like those are the most uh, underwhelming on this project for sure. I, I feel like Billy ends this album on a very solid note. She strings together tracks like My Strange Addiction and Bury a Friend. Billy makes use of samples on here, the former using clips from the American TV series The Office. The latter is using some SoundCloud sampling of Crooks. My Strange Addiction though specifically is a funky little number that is interesting for its structure. Like I said before, it, it uses samples of The Office. It does that at the beginning, after the first chorus, and at the end of the track. It's got like this slick kind of electro pop feel to it with the bouncy synthesizers. It's just bubbly fun. Then we get the track Bury a Friend, uh, which is apathetic. It's kind of got like a scary tone to it. It talks about Billy's experience with sleep paralysis. It's a track that also transitions into the next Ilo Milo. This one is lighthearted with the instrumental. The synthesizer sounds like something you would get out of a 90s arcade video game. The vocals are altered with more of a, a choppy and wavering effect. From there, the track listing moves into depression-filled territory. The song Listen Before I Go calls for Billy's lover's attention in a very self-aware, selfish cry. Billy is essentially referring to an impending breakup or suicide and she's either talking directly to her audience or a lover. I love the kind of music that leaves that up to the interpretation of the audience. Either interpretation you take with the track, it's a, it's a frightening one that ends with sirens. Kind of suggests that Billy has rid herself of her demons by attempting to kill herself by jumping off the rooftop that she alluded to in the first verse. And yes, that's pretty melodramatic and Billy likes to drive home that message with the visuals of her music videos. I still feel like the songwriting is pretty mature and impressive on this track though. I love the awareness from Billy. She understands that her lover and listeners uh, should and will move on to the next person. They will seek comfort from that new person, whether it's a lover or the next big artist in the mainstream. It kind of mirrors the consumption of music nowadays, and I feel like it's a, a decent enough parallel that you could draw from the lyrics. From there, the album's penultimate track is a haunting and contradicting acoustic ballad. I love the acoustic guitar on here. Billy herself has said that this is one of her favorite tracks. It's called I Love You. On here, I love the sense of dynamics moving away from the denial in the verse uh, uh, building towards this frustration or anger in the chorus. Billy is saying that she hates to love her lover and she regrets that she let her guard down in the first place to let someone see right through her. We also hear a bit of the aftermath with the sirens from the previous track as some first aid responders are talking in the background. Now before we close the album, I appreciate the cohesive ending to it. The themes of dark thoughts, depression, morality, and religion, they kind of wrap up on this track called Goodbye. In fact, a lyric from every song on this project excluding the the intro which is just 14 seconds long is used on this final track cohesively i feel like this album kind of comes full circle and it, it just wraps up the narrative pretty well does it in a very creative way just to summarize the disturbing nature of the album billy eilish's debut holds up to the hype in my opinion it was one of the most anticipated albums of the entire year, I would say. This project is definitely notable for some pop bangers. We get some lyrical maturity on here. We get some dark and haunting tones that mix up the typical pop song structures. And above all else, I can tell that Billy had fun making these songs, which is hard to execute with an apathetic vocal delivery and a, a scary narrative. I have major respect for Billy, even though I came into this project a little hesitant, thinking that she might just be ripping off Lord. But now I can put that aside and say that Billy has become a great artist in her own right. On this project, she leaves some wiggle room for improvement and some development, and I am looking forward to what she will do next. It will be interesting moving ahead because she has killed her demons, or possibly herself in a metaphorical sense on this album. She's kind of rid herself of this evil ego. I definitely see the influence of this album on other artists in the future, and, um, they might just be imitating her style from now on. Overall, I'm feeling an 8 out of 10. Now tell me what you thought of the project. Sound off down below in the comments. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new in town. Tell me what I should review next. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a rockin' day.